Never been to prison. I don't want to go to prison, man. That shit scares me. You know why I can't go to prison? Because I dropped the soap at home in a regular shower too much. <laughs> you ever drop the soap at home in the shower, sir? That shit's like so slippery and wet to pick up. You be, you be down there in a real vulnerable position for about three seconds. Do you know what somebody could do to you in prison? <laughs> in three seconds? You get raped and wouldn't even know it. You get like walk by rape, you know what I mean? <laughs> you come back around for seconds. <laughs> you turn around and be a dude in the corner smoking a wet cigarette. It's crazy in here, huh? It's a, go <laughs> it's a ghost raper. <laughs> it's raping everybody. I want to go to prison, man. I watched that show, Scared Straight. You see this show, Scared Straight? These little kids? There should be rules to this show. I think they'd be like going too far with these little kids, you know? They should be like, they should sign like the parents shouldn't put them in that shit. We will rape you if you come in here, little boy. We will pull down your Batman underwear. <laughs> He's only eight, man. You know? I had a cousin that's in prison. I don't like talking to him on the phone, because every time I talk to him, he try to act like he not in prison. <laughs> he try to make his days sound like my days. <laughs> he be like, DC, what you getting ready to do today? I be like, I'm finna work out, get something to eat, and watch TV. He be like, me too. <laughs> he has a cell phone. You don't have cell phones in prison? He has a cell phone in prison, man. Like, no lie, I was talking to him last Thanksgiving, and his call accidentally dropped. He called me right back. Do you know what he said? I can't stand T-Mobile. <laughs> I'm thinking about switching over to AT&T. It was like he just set himself up. I was like, I don't know why you keep dropping calls in there when you got plenty of bars. Uh, <laughs> you should have the best service in the world right now. I'm a snitch, too. That's why I can't go to prison. <laughs> I snitched on two of my best friends in elementary school. It was easy, too. It wasn't as hard as it sounded. <laughs> Let me tell you what these two assholes gonna do. They brought two fake bags of marijuana to school, right? And they were talking about we were supposed to sell it. We, this was the plan. We was gonna sell one bag for $10, or we was gonna sell two bags for 15 and I was down. I was like, okay, I'm down, but I got a question. What's gonna happen to us when the people that smoke this weed find out they done smoked some dirt and some parsley? <laughs> they was like, that's not important. Don't worry about that. Somehow it gets back to the principal and she calls me to the office. She sits me down and she's like, hey, DC, um, we have reason to believe that you or somebody you know has some drug paraphernalia on you and you're tending to sell it on campus grounds. And for the first about 30 seconds, I tried to be tough. I was like, I'm gonna be honest with you, Miss Stevens. I don't know nothing about what you talking about. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you a damn thing. <laughs> and she was like, I figured you would say something like that. And she opened up the door and two police walked in. And this is when I figured out that I was a bitch. <laughs> the police, they didn't even have to ask me no questions like, I got to talking so fast to the police, it sounded like I was at an auction. I was like, oh, let me let you know what these two niggas was talking about doing. They were talking about selling this marijuana. They said we're going to sell one for the 10, two for the 15. I said it's not going to be a good idea. And I just sold these niggas out for no reason. 